Thank you, Ota, for uh, the introductions, and thank you, uh, the Siam Berlin, who invited me for uh, this uh, program. So, um, so I uh, would like to start uh, my presentation that uh, relates to the archaeological analysis of the urban form in Phnom Penh, to uh, uncovering the uh, organization through uh, figure and facade from the 14th century up until uh, present day with a focus on Raktil or Cambodian modern movements uh, during the 20th century, uh, examine the urban form through layer of history, sto uh, history, uh, story, map, uh, archival evidence, and physical observations. So this presentation is divided into five uh, sections, and each section represents urban rapture identified in my research. So the first, uh, uh, kind of ruptures is um, so um, so an, a number of uh, South East Asian city, uh, mostly uh, begin by uh, the tale of the legions. Uh, Phnom Penh is one of those. The story of Phnom Penh starts from 14th century as the tale about a kind of a wealthy woman named Penh, um, who found for a statue of the Buddha and one's uh, Vishnu inside a, a floating trees. Uh, um, and MC uh, uh, got, got gatherings the villagers and brought all those uh, uh, five statues and put on the hills. Uh, inside the temple on the hill, uh, later on the hill become uh, what's named Wat Phnom, and later on the area was named Phnom Penh is followed the name of uh, uh, Lady Penh and the name of the hill. And in um, uh, 1430s, the, lo uh, the location was chosen by the king of Cambodia to move the, uh, the royal capital after the collapse of the uh, Angkor Empire. Uh, so before the French uh, colonial, so people in the city live along the, uh, the bank of the river in kind of wooden bamboo with kind of a side roof. So the, the urban form of the city is kind of gatherings, you can see kind of... Oh, uh, Gathering kind of a little bit around the kind of the, the, the compound of Sky Buddhist uh, monastery and also the royal palace here. And this is kind of the wall of the royal palace. And the kind of the inhabit, the people had inhabit at the time kind of uh, connect between these two areas together kind of along the river here. And this is uh, that I, it can be considered kind of, kind of the, the, the pre uh, colonized uh, urban form inside the city. And then we have the, the French protectorate that was established in uh, 1863. And the colony urban form of Phnom Penh uh, uh, was planned in 1890s. The French started to build uh, strictly on the swampy area that follows three main ethnic group, the French, the Chinese, the Khmer, along the river. The M3 TU center in Phnom Penh was installed, so in order to kind of so the rule over the city and recentralize it, and the property, the king, king at the time, declared the, uh, the property uh, to the state. So it's kind of the first time that we have kind of free market inside the city. The urban expansions at the time was made through the kind of filling the canal and transfer into kind of boulevard and dike. Uh, the street grid was built between those dike and boulevards and considered the monumental buildings uh, uh, refer to kind of the monuments, uh, the public buildings, as the, the center points. So the key institute of French administrations uh, at the time was to be uh, such as kind of a tax station, post office, treasury in kind of the French quarters, and the Chinese that uh, it was used at the time as kind of the market and kind of trade center. And in the early 20th century, the main institute of Cambodia culture, uh, such as National Museum, the School of Cambodian Art was built in Khmer Quarter. School of, um, School of uh, Cambodian Art was created by the French uh, uh, painter, uh, uh, Joy Groyer, in uh, 1918, in, a purport, in the, uh, the, the goal to sell uh, Cambodian art. So, uh, 
At the time, Grolier's uh, kind of denies all the drawing and painting they incorporate with a uh, sort of uh, a forensos that he, ter he termed up like uh, copyings. So instead, he uh, taught pure anti Cambodian art with some new uh, component and methodology to the curriculums. And until 1940s, a Japanese a painter, a Suzuki Sichinori, that was teaching at the School of Cambodian Art at the time, was trained uh, at the art school in Paris. So Suzuki uh, brought with him kind of the modern knowledge, and his teaching based on observation from lies as the foundations, it was considered as kind of the modern paintings. Uh, after uh, um, uh, observation, students were recognized and developed their own vision and style in order to become kind of a new, uh, modern uh, Khmer painter. The School of Cambodian Art is considered also a place for teaching uh, um, class, both classical and modern art in the early 20th centuries by introducing kind of new component of uh, techniques and methodology into their uh, curriculums. And uh, Cambodia, we uh, received independence in uh, 1953. Uh, so after independence, the friend Rodom Senu abdicated the thrones uh, in 1955 and formed his own uh, political group that's called Sungkum Yum. So Sungkum Yum was kind of the group of kind of Cambodian people that had the same ideology for their own countries and later on was recognized by uh, uh, the local people, uh, referred to kind of the period uh, in kind of post-independent uh, period. Uh, after, after one election, uh, Senu became the first prime minister of, of Cambodia in, at the time in 1955. So, um, Sung Kum Rin Yum uh, in its kind of my term, but uh, a little bit uh, respond to the word uh, socialism, uh, socialism in uh, uh, Western uh, terminologies. Uh, Cambodia enjoy an unprecedented era of economic and social developments associated with the renaissance of art and architecture. The countrywide modernization and construction work, work uh, were undertaken by national and international experts for uh, urban planning, architectural design, and engineering. Domestic, uh, foreign, uh, finance, domestic and foreign uh, financing for major constructions work like road, airport, hospital, university, and uh, factory that was um, often equipped, often uh, staff and fully equipped. So uh, at the time, the Rome Center also asked uh, other countries to provide aid, uh, technical assistance, and also buildings. New Khmer architecture was described as an architectural movement in the 1650s and 1670s, uh, combining sort of modern material and techniques with a Cambodian traditional lifestyle. Mostly, it uh, was shown on the public building inspired by uh, Angkor Wat's uh, architecture. The term New Khmer uh, Architecture uh, appeared in a magazine and a journal in the 60s. On Cambodia, all document at the time was uh, written in French uh, and English. And they kind of circulate only in diploma, uh, diplomatic and also the uh, scholar cycle. So this may be the word uh, New Khmer Architecture is used uh, to, to kind of figure Cambodia as a new nation. Uh, free from uh, colonial roofs and connect it to kind of the former uh, glorious Khmer Empire. So uh, new, Khmer, uh, new Khmer architecture also engaged with kind of diverse international uh, architects and urbanists and engineers from Japan, uh, Europe, uh, former uh, Soviet Union and the US and elsewhere joined with Cambodia on uh, kind of building many major projects. And this is one of the kind of uh, major development projects uh, in uh, 1960 that we call uh, Bazaar Riverfront Projects. The team was led by Cambodian uh, well-known architect Van Molwan, who was awarded a scholarship to study architecture at the art school in Paris. 
from 1947 to 1956. So after he came back to Cambodia, he was appointed by the King Sehanu to be the head of the, uh, the architects and also hold many important positions in Cambodian governments, including the uh, establishment of the Royal University of Fine Art in Phnom Penh in 1965. So uh, the Royal University uh, of Fine Art uh, kind of the university that developed from the former school of Cambodian art that found by uh, Groyer in 1918s. Uh, so inside the university, uh, they went into kind of five uh, departments. So we have the uh, Department of Architecture, uh, Archaeology, uh, Plastic Art, Music, and Choreographic Art. Uh, sorry, one this email a little bit blurred. Uh, so, um, so at the time, uh, Senu started to begin uh, to build his own uh, vision about new nations, with new Khmer architecture coming to the central and was built throughout the countries. It was often featured in film and a photograph that made by him to celebrate Cambodian modern modernization during the post-independent period. Foreign state, foreign state visit was an opportunity to showcase the kingdom new born architecture in which new Khmer architecture was on display. Also, it was not only just the architectural and cultural building, but also it was a political settlement that the new Cambodian has arised. The Europeans' uh, uh, dreams The European dream of the 60s was derived by uh, the civil war by the late 60s. Domestic uh, polit politics was uh, turning against Senu. So after the club of Senu regions, uh, we have another region, it's Lono region that uh, backed by Americans. So control uh, Cambodia for several years and lead to kind of civil war. So in 19... Uh, uh, 75, the Khmer Rouge uh, in Phnom Penh and uh, start to begin to rewrite the uh, kind of the urban landscape of the city by emptying uh, its populations. After the collapse of the Khmer Rouge in 1979, uh, uh, people returned to Phnom Penh from kind of different parts of uh, Cambodia uh, in the 80s and 90s and start to kind of uh, occupy many public spaces, including kind of public buildings. Uh, 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 on the legs and also kind of empty lands. And so this case, the white building is one of those. So the white building was designed by Paris Trend Louis Benhaps, Canadian Paris Trend Louis Benhaps with uh, Russian engineer Vladimir Bondesky, uh, and, oh, and inaugurated in 1963. So the white building is kind of the first building, uh, at first attempt to offer kind of multi-story uh, uh, modern lifestyle to the low-cost families in the uh, 60 and 70. After forced uh, evacuation during the Khmer Rouge, some of the former uh, recent kind of, including kind of Swayati, returned to the building again, and they start to build up uh, the community as uh, the artist community inside the white buildings. The informal structure aid by residents has uh, become some of the most significant elements of the buildings. They not only saw how the building has evolved through a different era, but also how residents respond to the shifting of political uh, context by adapting their urban way of life. So, unfortunately, the building was destroyed in early uh, 2017 and it will be replaced by this kind of giant Naga World Casino buildings. That now it's kind of construction is on the way. Since the open, uh, opening up the economy uh, in 2000, Phnom Penh has, uh, has seen as the extensive rise in urban uh, constructions. The, uh, the, the current growth of economic of the city is based on the exploitation of urban space. 
for construction and redevelopments, pull community has moved out uh, uh, to the city peripheries uh, while keeping the city center for ambitious, ambitious uh, uh, urban development projects. They have driven by uh, foreign investment. So the current planning of the city focus on globalization and development of uh, private and rather than the public ones. Thank you.